In this video, we're going to discuss strong and weak electrolytes. Now, this property actually gets at the nature of aqueous solutions. And what we're going to talk about here are some results from a famous uh, early chemist named Zvante Arrhenius. And his name will come up a lot in this class. A lot of his uh, experiments had a profound impact on our early understanding of chemistry, um, especially when we start talking about acids and bases. Uh, which we'll get to a little bit in this video and definitely much more throughout this unit and throughout this class. So Zvante Arrhenius was really interested in aqueous solutions and the nature and properties of aqueous solutions. And one property that he was interested in in particular was their electrical conductivity. So electrical conductivity. And basically what electrical conductivity is, is just how good something is at conducting electricity, right? So if you run electricity through it, is it a good conductor or not? Will it be able to transport that electricity from one, uh, one object to the next or continue to uh, transport that electricity or will it not, right? That's ba the basic idea of electrical conductivity. So he was really interested in how solutions conduct electricity. Because what he noticed is that certain solutions were really good conductors and other solutions were not good conductors. So we have an example here of two different solutions uh, prepared and they're hooked up to a battery that's hooked up to a lamp, right? Um, and in this first example, we have a salt solution. So you pour the salt in water. So this is a solution of salt and water. You've got uh, your battery hooked up in the solution. And what you notice is that the light bulb is shining. That means that this salt solution is conducting electricity. Uh, and in this other graphic, we have a sugar solution. And the primary component, at least of table sugar, is sucrose. And we have this sucrose solution. And what you notice is that it's hooked up to the same battery and the light is just not turning on, right? We got no light in this situation, right, with this sugar solution. So this was kind of the basic idea behind the experiments that Arrhenius uh, was doing and what he was interested in. Why are certain solutions, why is it that certain solutions conduct electricity so well and others turn into a dud, right? So one property that he noted, what he thought was the defining property of whether things, uh, con whether a solution conducts electricity or not is if it produces ions, right? So what we notice here in the uh, sodium chloride example, the salt example, is that this solution produces ions, whereas in the sugar solution, this does not produce ions. So does not produce ions. So we talked in the last video about this uh, process known as hydration. Right. When um, when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, water is going to hydrate those sodium and chlorine ions. So you're going to get these separate positive and negative ions in solution when you dissolve a salt. Whereas with sugar. Right. We noted that, yeah, it, it has these these uh, polar bonds and those are going to interact with water. So it'll dissolve but you don't get these ions in solution. It's not gonna break apart, right? It, it'll dissolve, it has these strong interactions with the water molecules, but it's not going to dissolve in the way that sodium chloride would. And so Arrhenius's main uh, point here was that in order for something, for a solution to be a good conductor, it has to be a solution that produces ions. Otherwise, it will not be a good conductor, right? And so, uh, so we kind of have this idea of electrolytes and, and strong and weak conductors. So this su sugar solution would be a non-conductive. So this wouldn't even be a weak electrolyte. This just wouldn't be an electrolyte at all. It's not going to be able to, to conduct any electricity. But in these studies, Arrhenius was able to discern the properties of solutions, and he was even able to define acids in a very um, useful way. So first, let's kind of talk about what, what class of compounds are gonna make strong electrolytes. So there's, there's three main ones. So strong electrolytes. So the first is going to be soluble 
salts. And by salts, I'm not just talking about sodium chloride. I'm talking about anything that is an, a solid that's held together by ionic bonds, right? So we've seen this with NaCl, right? You dissolve NaCl in water, right? So let me write H2O up top, right? We know that we get these aqueous sodium cations and aqueous chlorine anions as a result. Right when we dissolve uh, sodium chloride in water. So any soluble salt that dissolves and produces ions is going to be uh, a strong electrolyte, right? Uh, the second strong electrolyte is going to be strong acids. And so before I give examples here, let's take a pause and talk about what Arrhenius was able to discover about acids. At this time, acids... At the time that he was doing these experiments, acids were well known, but they were mostly characterized by kind of exterior properties. So they were really characterized by their taste, right? They had a sweet, sour taste to them. That was how people were able to classify acids in the 19th century. Um, and there, but nobody really knew the molecular nature of what made an acid an acid. And Arrhenius was one of the first people to give that type of insight. So what he discovered is that an acid is any uh, substance that produces hydrogen ions in solution. So his classification of an acid was a substance that produces H plus ions in solution. Right, so basically you dissolve something in water, then you uh, get some H plus ions out of it, that's going to be an acid, right? So for example, um, an example of an acid, and we kind of talked about this when we talked about naming acids, uh, one acid is hydrochloric acid, right, HCl. And if you dissolve HCl in water, what's going to happen to HCl is it's going to behave very much like a soluble salt. It's going to produce an H plus ion, an aqueous H plus ion, and a chlorine anion, right? So just like in, even though it's a covalent bond, right? So it's, it's a covalent bond between H. Uh, the hydrogen and chlorine and hydrochloric acid. But what happens when it dissolves in water is that those interactions with the polar water molecules are much stronger than the bond between the hydrogen and chlorine. So it pulls it apart in a very similar way as these soluble salts, right? So you end up with H plus uh, aqueous hydrogen ions and aqueous chlorine anions, right? Another example of a strong acid is uh, nitric acid, so HNO3. You dissolve this guy in some water, you're going to get a hydrogen ion and the NO3 anion, right, in aqueous solution, right? So just like with the soluble salts, just like with sodium chloride, you're going to get a very, very strong attraction between these polar water molecules and the, the separate ions in solution, right? Now, uh, so this production of H plus ions is what makes it an acid, right? What makes it a strong acid? So the fact that it's a strong acid with these acids, you're basically going to get almost 100% of the HCl and HNO3 molecules will dissociate in this fashion, right? So, um, so what characterizes a strong acid is that virtually all of the molecules uh, ionize, right? So in a strong acid, virtually uh, every molecule ionizes, right? So basically for, for the most part, if you dissolve HCl, you'll have very few um, HCl molecules left in solution, you'll mostly have H plus, aqueous H plus ions and aqueous uh, chlorine anions. Now, Arrhenius, this Arrhenius definition of an acid is something that we'll reinvestigate later in the course. 
Um, it's actually not the most complete definition of an asset, but it, this was the first step towards being able to characterize the nature of an asset on a molecular level. He was also able to do the same thing with bases, and he discovered that bases were substances that produced OH anions in solution. So a substance that produces OH ions in solution. Right, so for a strong uh, base, right, it can also be a strong electrolyte as well. So that's the third thing that can be a strong electrolyte is a strong base, right? So something like sodium hydroxide, right, NaOH, right, you dissolve this guy in water and you get a sodium cation hydrated plus an OH anion hydrated in water, right? So, uh, so from this, strong electrolytes can be soluble salts, strong acids, or strong bases. And these, um, you know, these experiments, these, you know, dis just studying the electrical conductivity of solutions led to some of the earliest characterizations of acids and bases. So now, by contrast, weak electrolytes, Right, so you might be able to guess that weak electrolytes uh, primarily are weak acids and weak bases, right? So weak acids and weak bases. So what's an example of a weak acid, right? So uh, one example that we can give is acetic acid, which has the following molecular formula, HC2H3O2. Right now, if you dissolve this guy in water, right, you will get some hydrogen ions, right? So you, this will happen, right? So you'll get some hydrogen ions and you'll get an acetate anion, right? But this happens to a much lesser degree than it does for strong acid like HCl or nitric acid. So for, for the case of acetic acid, about 1% um, of the molecules will ionize. So you'll get about 1% ionization, whereas in HCl and nitric acid, you'll get about 100% ionization, right? Like virtually all of the molecules will ionize for a strong acid. Before weak acid, you get something like 1%, 3%, 5%, you know, something very low where um, you're getting some H plus ions, that's true, but you're not getting a lot of H plus ions. And the same thing for weak bases, you'll get some OH um, anions, but you won't get a lot of ionization for weak bases or weak acids, right? And then the last class that we have here is the non-conductive um, solutions, right? Which we saw an example of that in the beginning, which was sucrose, where it isn't going to ionize at all, right? So something that doesn't ionize at all, will create um, no electrical conductivity, you'll have no electrical conductivity, uh, no electrical charge, right? So, uh, so this is an uh, introduction to strong and weak electrolytes, um, and this gives you a little bit more of insight into the nature of aqueous solutions. So in the first video, we introduced aqueous solutions and their properties, and this is one of the, the most important properties um, is its electrical conductivity as it gives um, a little bit of insight into the nature of these solutions and how strong they are.